Welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Today, Coach Mia and I go into one of the biggest catalysts in her fitness journey. I do have to go ahead and give a trigger warning for eating disorders. We do not go into specifics, but it is mentioned. If you guys are enjoying this episode and think it would be beneficial for a friend to hear, then we'd love if you could share it. Otherwise, if you can give this a thumbs up, subscribe, or leave a review, we'd really appreciate it. We'll catch you on the inside. Okay, Mia, you are a self-proclaimed ninja creamy queen, so I need to know the deets. We just got a creamy because you really influenced us that we needed it in our life, and I would like to take a little sidestep to this story because I remember when the creamy came out or something to that matter a few years ago, and I was like, Alex, I think that we should get this ice cream maker, and he was like, I've never seen you once make ice cream in your entire life. And I said, it's because I don't have an ice cream maker. (laughs) How would you see me make ice cream? I just don't see how it's possible. But he's actually the one that came around and ordered it. You sent us a massive spreadsheet of everything for making all different types of creamies. So give us the lowdown. Well, first, I would like to start by saying that I never used to make any kind of like protein ice cream, protein creation. It's just not my vibe. But when the Ninja Creamy came out, the possibilities are endless. And so with that being the case and me being very organized as I am, um, I inevitably put everything into a spreadsheet because there's a plethora of ingredients and things that you can put in there and flavorings and everything of that sort. And so, yeah, the the Ninja Creamy is great. Um, Everyone should buy it. And I think that Ninja should give me a code is the (laughs) lowdown on that one. But um, within that as well, it is something where it's a fun way to get in some some good protein if you are making um, ice cream. And actually, I've used it to get in my carbs pretty frequently making sorbets. And um, my friend made a date shake. And so I've been making that as well. And that's been really good. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend the creamy to I, absolutely anyone and everyone. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw like sorbet was something you could make because when I was in St. Bart's, a.k.a. <laughs> my favorite place in the entire world, uh, that I had sorbets and I was like, this is incredible. Why don't I have this more often? And it is so great to get in carbs. I know you and I are both trying to get in a good amount of carbs (laughs) um, and make sure that we're fueling ourselves enough. And for you saying it's a fun way to get in protein, that's actually the other reason that we got it is Alex has never been like a protein treat type of person or making things with protein powder. And then he, as we've talked about, he's been dedicated to the shake game uh, because he needs to get in that amount of protein and he really can't get it all in with whole food sources. And so he has a shake a day. And with that, he's getting real tired of the shake per day, which I can understand. I do not know how he's stayed so dedicated to the shake because I myself haven't drank in, just drank in. I haven't drank a (laughs) normal protein shake in probably a year or two. It's been a minute. And he stayed dedicated to it. And he was like, I'm sick and tired of this. I want to have something more fun to be able to have every night and enjoy and look forward to. Yeah. And it's a great way to do it. I, similar issue, love the flavor of the protein powders by Legion. Oh, you can also (laughs) use uh, Mia PD if you are wanting to get a discount on Legion products. Shameless plug. Um, But I love the flavors of them, but I'm not someone who's going to sit down and just drink a shake. And so it is something where um, getting creative in the kitchen a little bit and just putting that into the creamy has been something that's been really beneficial. So it takes just a little bit of creativity to make it more fun. (laughs) What has been your all-time favorite as of right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as of currently, um, if you guys have any kind of Kroger or Ralph's or any of those locations near you, they sell Carb Master milk. It's very, very similar to the Fairlife milk, um, but they have chocolate and vanilla flavors. Mm. So if you put the chocolate one in there and you combine it with like one to two tablespoons of just pure cocoa powder, that's the way that I really like to do it. Some people add sweeteners on top of that. I don't really think it needs it, but that is a base. And then adding in extracts, my favorite has been almond as of recently, is so, so good. It's just very, very chocolatey and really, really awesome. And I'm historically a fruit flavored person. Um, but that is one that is just a staple because it's so simple that I can just throw a bunch of them in my freezer and have them ready to go, which Mm -hmm. has been great. (laughs) Alex sent me some groceries to get so that he could put together his creamy. And he 
had said, I know that if the recipe has more than like three or four ingredients for the base, I'm not going to make it. So he like sent over and he was like, I'm just going to try this. I'm going to do it exactly like it's written out and we'll decide from there. Uh, But as we also discussed, midday squares are going to be a great Mm -hmm. topper. So we're excited to try that, especially the cookie dough one. I can just, that one all chopped up. I can already, I can taste it. So good. I'm thinking about that one in with like the legions, like the cocoa cereal flavor. Ooh. I feel like that would be a really good. Yeah. yeah. Could it um you know I'm about that. I'm about that cinnamon cereal. You can also <laughs> use code Sue on all Legion products, <laughs> let me tell you. Wait, you didn't really think we were gonna spend all of that time talking about the ninja creamy and not give you the spreadsheet that Mia made? That's right. There are 18 bases on this spreadsheet with endless flavor combinations that you can make. Also going over different thickeners and sweeteners that work really well from the self-proclaimed Ninja Creamy Queen. So go ahead and head to the description box or the show notes to get the link, and this will be sent directly to your inbox. We cannot wait to see what you create. Make sure you tag us and grab your freebie. Uh, getting into today's episode. If you guys did not meet Mia in the last episode, then you should probably go ahead and listen to that one first, where you hear all about Mia's journey and why we hired her to be a coach here for physique development. And what we really wanted to do was to dive in one of the most powerful things that changed your fitness journey that we did talk about in the last episode. Yeah, of course. So I think that one of the most powerful things that was a catalyst for my journey as a whole was really changing what I identified with and the internal and external language I used surrounding the actions I was taking. My journey really stemmed from me always telling myself that I was the unattractive or bigger friend or family member. And then down the road when I did struggle with my eating disorder, it was I am the girl who is sick or I am the girl who is skinny or healthy, quote unquote. And that form of really identifying with those things was a negative thing that kept me stuck rather than pushing me forward. I always said things like, I'm never going to be able to look the way that I want. I'm never going to be able to eat more than 1,400 calories. Just statements I would make to myself that kept those statements as my reality. It was never, I'm going to do this. It was always, I can try, or maybe I will. Because if I was using that soft language, I was never letting anyone down, including myself. If the stories I told myself validated the actions I was taking, I was never held accountable to actually changing those actions. So this kept me comfortable, but it also kept me stuck. There were small glimpses in my early life of what could be when I just decided that I was going to do something. And so ultimately, when I started this fitness journey, when I decided that I didn't want to be this person anymore, it was because I didn't give myself another option. When you were using that language and finally deciding enough was enough, What did that change period look like? Because even if you're going to decide, I'm going to start positive talk right this second, it doesn't always mean that that just comes to fruition right away. Yeah. I mean, it was a slow process and it was something where I had that aha moment of I need to change what's happening. But then it was a whole other time period of me really investing in my knowledge about things and then also just changing that internal language and over time sharing that language with other people. So it became the external of telling my friends and family, I'm into this fitness thing. I am a fit person. I am someone who eats enough and fuels her body and really identifying that and then following that, sharing it on Instagram. When you did start to identify with these new phrases, did you feel like people were very accepting of it or that they had put those old labels on you as well? At the beginning, it was definitely hard because when you come from a background of an eating disorder, something like tracking macros can look like another form of of restriction. But in the way that I was doing it, I was ensuring that I was getting enough food. I was learning about food rather than just this is good and this is bad. And so within that process, it was kind of communicating and explaining things to people so that I was able to really change this new identity and show people that this was for the positive. I love that you noted of tracking macros as a way for you to eat enough, because I do think a lot of people use it for restriction. And by no means am I minimizing the fact that that happens. But I've talked a lot recently about tracking macros does help me eat enough. And it's not because I'm trying to restrict myself or trying to eat less. It's just life is really busy. And when stress is high, my appetite goes low. And sometimes I have to remind myself to eat. And 
it, it really isn't coming from any place of something subconscious or any kind of control I'm trying to have. It's just the fact of the matter. And I'm extremely aware of it. And having that goal to hit makes me accountable to eat enough and to fuel my body. So I'm glad that you're able to twist that and really use it for something that was going to be beneficial for you. And know that instead of even taking on that identity of this is just something else that I'm doing to further this. Exactly. Because within taking on the identity that you want, you really have to align your actions with that. And tracking macros was so supportive of that new identity I was trying to create, especially, you know, you alluded to losing an appetite when you're busy. I do as well. And I started tracking my senior year of high school going into my freshman year of college. And when you are a freshman in college, it's really common to have iced coffee in the morning, nothing all day, and then get blackout drunk at night. And that's not something that I wanted to do because I knew that for my mental health, for my physical health, for everywhere that I came from in the past, that wasn't a supportive action. The supportive action was to make sure that I was getting enough food in so that I could be the girl who fuels her body. And one other thing that I love that you mentioned is really taking time to explain things to other people that you were in the process of changing. I think change is so incredibly beautiful, but a lot of times it can be hard for those around you. And you get in your head of, I'm making this change and everyone should just be on board. And when people question it, it's not necessarily that they don't support your change. It might just be that they have known you as a different version for so long. And I found that when I got into my fitness, journey because it was very different of the way I was eating, the things that were important to me, how I took care of myself, and it looked vastly different than it had before. And I had to put new boundaries in place with people in my life. I had to do a lot of explaining about why this was important to me and why I cared about it. And again, by no means were they not trying to support me. They just didn't understand. And sometimes it can be really hard to support or care for something that you don't understand. And I I think people skip over that of everyone should just support me blindly and just say, you go, you do this. But being able to explain it, give them space to recognize they're meeting a new version of you too. They have identified and met this person. Even if they are words that you've spoken upon yourself, there's always identifiers of, like you said, the actions are changing. So even if they didn't put that exact label on you of, oh, you're the skinny girl, uh, they also knew you as the way that your actions portrayed at that time. So I always like to really emphasize sometimes you have to re introduce yourself to people and like rebrand and say, hey, this is who I am. I would love to tell you about it. But just having patience as people figure it out, because again, it's new for them, even if it's such a positive for you and even a positive for their relationship, it's new. And I think that's really important to create space for. Exactly. And that communication with others is so important beyond just them understanding you. It's also a way of speaking into existence what you're becoming. And so with that being the case, it was something for me where, you know, telling my parents and my friends why this was important to me and what I was actually trying to do was a form of gaining that support and therefore gaining support from myself. Because if I had other people around me to hold me accountable, I was able to also hold myself accountable. Yeah, and people can't read your minds. Yeah. So they don't know. And if you're wanting a little bit of accountability, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. And they might say something and not understand. I think the beautiful thing and can also be the hard thing about human relationships and human dynamics is it is so much of figuring out different people's communication style, how it might affect someone else and being able to to have conversations within that. So recognizing where someone else is coming from, what that means for you, and being able to approach that just with kindness of, yeah, I would like your accountability. This is what I care about now. Um, and I ask for your support as we all learn through this of what it means. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Now, to go back to that phrasing and when you are identifying as a new person, what were some of those affirmations or sayings that you would use in those moments? 
Well, the first thing was just establishing that my intention was I wanted to look strong and I wanted to look hot. And that was that was that. And so I really started showing up in alignment with that intention and, and saying, I am strong. I'm hot. I am powerful. I'm someone who goes to the gym and lifts weights. I'm someone who fuels her body. I didn't want to be the poor girl with eating disorder anymore. I wanted to be this new person that I was actively creating. And when was the moment happened that you realized that you were creating that person and it wasn't just something you were saying anymore. It was something that was true. Kind of a funny moment, actually. <laughs> um, when I was a freshman in college, we would always go out to this fun little 18 and up club in our um little town where I where I lived, small town things. And in the dead of winter one night, we went out and I was headed home early because I wanted to get some good sleep in. And from a snowbank emerged this girl who I had never met in my entire life. And she was pretty obviously intoxicated <laughs> and just stands in front of me, looks me up and down and goes, oh my goodness, you're that really jacked girl I follow on Instagram. And after making her sure that she got back <laughs> to her dorm safely, um, I had a, a little reflection moment of, oh my gosh, I'm that jacked girl on Instagram. And it was a really powerful moment to realize that I had come from a place where I was formerly the sick girl to now being the really jacked girl on Instagram. And that was something that I had done. It was something that I had changed my language. I had continued to change my actions and show up as that really jacked girl on Instagram until I was her in reality. And once you had that feeling, what what happened after that moment of reflection? It was this moment of really acknowledging my own power and realizing that if I was capable of this, what else was I capable of? I freaking love that. That literally like gives me cold chills on the low because I think that each person, there can be a different vehicle that gets them to, to each thing. And lifting was the one that really showed me how capable I was. And I dreamt so small before I started lifting. And maybe it was from being preconditioned that I was supposed to be small and take up less space. And just the multiple benefits that came along from lifting, being exposed to different types of bodies, different physiques, different different ways to go about health, and then being able to recognize I could pick up something heavier. When something was hard, I could I could do it. And in life, I was in a place that a, a lot of hard was coming my way, and I had to step in and do it. But a lot of that came from knowing if I can do this of go to the gym and be consistent or hit this PR, then what, what can't I do? And it really led me to stepping up in my own life. So when you realize that, and you were able to realize how capable you were, where'd you go from there? From there, I was really able to just set my mind to doing things that I had previously thought weren't possible for myself. Um, I graduated college early. I did undergraduate research. I applied for the position on PD, and it's the reason that I'm talking on this podcast. It's also the reason that I moved to Austin straight out of college and coordinated a cross-country move by myself. It's the reason I have all of my friends currently. It's something of putting myself out there before was really, really daunting. Saying that I was going to do something and actually following through with that action was never something that I would have done in the past. I started using language that was supportive of action rather than inaction. There's a lot of ongoing jokes between Alex and I when it comes to something as far as manifestation, which is very similar, if not the same, to what you're describing here. And it is just having a belief in yourself or what you can accomplish and envisioning this is what I'm going to do. And if you guys remember, that is also how things happened with getting Miguel on Team PD. And uh, a multitude of other things that have come together in our life have come from, hey, this is the thing that I want to happen, and I'm going to say that I can achieve it. But as you know, it's not just saying that you can do something. It is, again, that action. So what does that mean for manifestation for you, or what does that look like? So it's not just a matter of saying what you want to happen and having it happen. Again, it is really aligning your actions with what you're saying you want to happen in your life for you. So I'll give an example. When I was leading up to my overall win for my first season competing, it was something where every single time I saw a repeating number, I would say I am an overall champion in my head every single time I saw a repeating number. <laughs> for as many times as I could. And, you know, if you are familiar with prep, that's a lot. You're on <laughs> cardio machines, you're tracking your steps, you're tracking your macros. There's a lot of repeating numbers. And I repeated that to myself probably a hundred times a day. And 
at the end of all of that, it really was just that constant reminder to keep showing up as that overall champion. Because again, I could say that to myself over and over and over again and skip cardio sessions and not give my all to my workouts, and it wouldn't have made a difference. But because I had faith that that was going to happen because of the action that I was taking, I was able to achieve it. A hundred percent. Again, it's not just saying I'm an overall champion and hoping it fucking happens. It's saying I'm an overall champion and this is how an overall champion fucking acts. This is what it looks like. This is what I have to do to be that person. And I always like to also explain this as far as like actively or passively waiting for something of you can passively wait for something to happen, which means you literally just sit there and wait for something to happen. Or you you can actively wait of, okay, this thing is either I'm wanting it to happen or it is going to be happening. What can I be working towards and doing something in the meantime while I'm still waiting? And the the concept of the phrase of fake it till you make it, <laughs> I, I think that people, of course, have different thoughts on this as a whole or they use it in different scenarios. But I kind of like to look at it of this of like, I'm not necessarily faking it till I make it, but I am saying it so that I believe it remind myself of it so that I keep carrying that on. So when you said that to yourself over and over and over again of I am an overall champion, you technically weren't an overall champion at that time. So someone could say like, oh, you just fake it till you make it. But it's like fake it and act like it until you make it and you get to that point that you really can step into that power. Exactly. Because you have to be the person you want to be before you become that person. Freaking mic drop because I love that saying because it encapsulates exactly that of you have to act like the person and do things that the person you want to be would do to get to that point. It's not just I hope I become this type of person one day. It's what are the attributes? What are the actions? What are the traits of this person? And how do I become that? And how do I take the steps towards it? It really starts with identifying what stories you're telling yourself that are keeping you stuck. It could be as profound as I don't feel like I deserve to look good or as simple as I just don't like vegetables. And all of those stories are playing a part in keeping you where you're at. You might not even be aware of them, but it is something where identifying those stories is going to take just sitting with yourself and really, really digging in on what are the things that I am not acting on and why am I not acting on those things? Because at the core of it, there is some kind of dialogue going on that is keeping you in the action that is not supportive of who you want to be. Did you at the time like sit down and have a self audit or were you even self aware enough to do that? Or was it that journaling kind of got you into even starting to have that recognition within yourself? At the beginning, it was journaling and it was really just listening to people saying, oh, you need to change your language kind of a thing, right? Um, I would say that Upon hiring my first coach about three months in or so, she had been working with a personal development coach and posted something about sitting with no distractions for a whole hour and seeing what came up. And so I did that exercise and a lot came up for me about just the stories that I was continuing to tell myself that were keeping me in a place where I had the desire to restrict my food or to not fuel my training sessions or do things that were going to keep me as that old person that I had identified with. Once you have sat down and had that hour, if that's the way that you decide to go about it, which I do just encourage people to possibly try because how often in life are you without distractions, whether you have music on, you have a video in front of you, you have your phone, someone's doing something, truly sitting alone with your thoughts, I don't think enough people do in general. <laughs> so even if it's not for a full hour, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes to start off, I think that it could be extremely, extremely powerful. Powerful. But after you have that time and you have all of these really profound thoughts about yourself, what happens from there? In your day to day, really take note of when these things are coming up. So if you keep thinking, I'm never going to be consistent, every time that thought comes up for you, flip it around. Change it to, I am going to be consistent because I really care about this goal. And you can even say things like, I haven't been consistent in the past, but I am going to, or I am now a consistent person. So you're validating, hey, this isn't how I've always been. So it doesn't feel like you're lying to yourself. Because I can see that point mm -hmm. of view of being like, I'm a consistent person. And you know that you're bullshitting yourself <laughs> down under of like, 
everyone knows I'm not fucking consistent. And I'm sitting here saying I'm a consistent person. Like this is a little foo-foo. But using those types of phrases, as silly as they might sound, can validate what you were, where you're coming from, and also validate the active change that you are making. So even that type of verbiage and language can really matter. And I absolutely love that because something else is you have to change your actions at some point for there to be a change. And so if you validate that this is how it's been in the past, you can also validate that this is going to be different. Whenever people say this next quote, I always think of Hitch. And I need to know if other people think of Hitch when they (laughs) hear this quote or if it is just me. I feel like I watched Hitch a million times growing up and still think it is a very funny movie. But it's like the action of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I think that that is so prevalent of people think, oh, I can just keep doing the same thing. And why am I not seeing a change? It's like because you would have to change something to see a change, just like an object at rest will freaking stay at rest. (laughs) So if you're not making a change, nothing's going to freaking happen and it is all going to stay the same. Exactly. And those stories are leading to continuous inaction. The inaction, again, it makes sense. I see the human side of it. So when you are trying to make a change or convince someone to make a change, I sometimes ask, there's like four questions of, uh, I don't remember all of them off the exact top of my head, but it's like, what's good about staying the same? What's good about changing? What are things that will happen if you do stay the same? What are the things that will happen if you do change? And so I think that it's good to look at it of, hey, what What is the worst that could happen? Because I'm a pros and cons person. (laughs) I like to really look at uh, the trade-offs. What am I weighing against each other to make decisions? So when it came to that and you were like, do I do this or not? What was that thought process like to get to it? If anyone's familiar with the Enneagram, my type is a six. That is the trademarked worst case scenario type of the Enneagram. (laughs) And so that is something that always came up in my head. It was something of, what is the worst thing that can happen if I, for using my example, start eating more and training? The worst possible thing that can happen is that I hate how I look and go back to what I'm doing now, which obviously wasn't serving me. So what was the best case scenario? The best case scenario was that I got jacked and hot. <laughs> and so <laughs> that wins always, <laughs> always. I think that trade off was a pretty good one, right? The worst thing that would happen was I hated everything about it and I went back to what I was currently doing. The best thing that happened was I got out of that really dark place and I completely transformed my life. And I'm really happy to say that the best possible scenario happened. (laughs) It's funny because Alex uses something similar, but he uses it of, okay, if I don't accomplish this, then I'm proving myself right. And then if I do accomplish it, I might be proving myself wrong, but then I get what I want out of it. So that's his trade-off of like, I'll do it. And if it doesn't work, then I can prove to myself it didn't work. And then I can be righteous that I tried it and it didn't work. Uh, But if I am right, then I can just kind of swallow that and have the positive result of what it brings into my life. I freaking love that. (laughs) You got to know yourself and know what's going to work for you because there are things that I do in my routine or my day to day of how I talk to myself or how I motivate myself or even just knowing, hey, I'm going to possibly under eat because I'm busy. So having a coach and having the accountability of macros to hit is something I should have in place right now. It's being proactive about your personality and traits you know about yourself to also work with it of the concept of kind of like, hacking yourself, but it's really just learning about yourself to know your tendencies so you can work with them instead of against them constantly. That's one of the most positive things that I've learned from having a coach is really just that certain things are going to work for you and certain things are not. And it's about finding what is going to work for you to hold you accountable to the things that you are trying to accomplish. And so with that, meal prepping might not work for everyone. But you do have to find what does work for you so that you don't miss meals and so that you are able to get your food in. It doesn't have to be what everyone else is doing, but it has to be what's going to realistically work for you in your life. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Now, when it comes to your clients, let's say someone is having some soft talk. (laughs) They're, They're using the... 
I am statements and following it along with things that aren't very positive about themselves. What does that look like for you? How do you talk to clients in those situations? For their own good, I'm always going to call them the fuck out (laughs) because I, as a coach, don't tolerate people keeping themselves in a place where they don't want to be. And I would like to add a clarifier there is that if you haven't noticed, Mia is a very, very sweet, sweet person. (laughs) So by no means when she says, I don't tolerate people being less than they are, mean that she's going to be a slave driver and any excuse you give her, she's just going to roll out. She's saying that based on each individual person, she's going to look at their life, their goals, who they are, their potential, and push them to be their best. And she's also openly stating she wants people who want to become better people. And so if you don't align with that, that's something we talk about a lot within coaching is being able, and you talked about doing your research of reaching out to multiple coaches when you first uh, talked to your first coach, and then when you decided to compete of reaching out to multiple coaches, even after you had a good call. But you also looked at what was important to you, what aligned with what you wanted to accomplish and making the decision from there. And just like I said in the other episode of people don't buy coaching, they buy coaches. And so being able to see, hey, these things that Mia is saying about the the language she used to use, that sounds a lot like me. And I, I want to make a change or I think I might need to make a change and I need that accountability. That's who she's saying she's not going to allow you be less. She's not going to allow you to come to her and say all of these things and stay in inaction. And hopefully because you're signing up, you know that and you want that push to allow you to take that next step to that next level. By stepping into working with me, you are committing to changing the negative areas that you previously identified with. And not everyone's ready for that. And that's totally okay. I just might not be the coach for you. And that's something where I am someone who is an absolute cheerleader of her clients. Like, I freaking love it. I love to open check-ins and just hype someone up. But if there's something in there that I don't quite agree with, I'm going to tell that client and I'm going to tell them why. And I'm going to tell them why we're going to fix that thing and why we're going to fix that language and how we're going to get benefit out of it. So how would that go in a check-in? So let's say I say something like, I I can't eat that much or there's there's no way I could increase the weight for my next exercise when I do it. In that instance, we're immediately going to identify where we can change that language to support where we want to be. So if someone is telling me there's no way that I can eat that much, we might go back to that and say, I haven't been able to eat this much in the past because I've been consistently under eating. From here, I'm going to acknowledge that I need to repair my metabolism a little bit and get into a spot where I'm realistically able to accomplish the goals that I have. Really changing that identity to I need to fuel my body during this time period from I need to restrict my food so that I don't gain weight is a powerful mindset change that's therefore going to actually fuel that physiology to do what you want it to do. I actually recently had a client in her onboarding tell me that she felt like she was never going to be happy with her body. And it made me really, really sad because I know that that's not true. Her ultimate goal was then to just look decent and be healthy. And while I love the focus on health, we all deserve to be confident and healthy. The first thing that we did with her onboarding was actually challenge that belief. So why did she believe that she was never going to be able to look the way that she wanted to? We really found that that belief was just based on past experience. She had never been able to look the way that she wanted to, so why would she ever be able to in the future? So if she set out to feel confident and was unable to achieve it, then therefore she had failed herself. And so not even speaking that into existence was a way of keeping herself safe. So what did you guys do from there? We rewrote that story because something that I wholeheartedly believe is that health is holistic and it includes both your confidence in yourself and your internal health. So while yes, we need to have realistic goals, a realistic goal is to feel confident. When you're able to change that language to I deserve to feel confident, it really acts as the fuel for the actions that are going to help you get there. I hear this a lot, whether it's confidence, tracking macros, really anything, that language of I can't or I'm going to try is a way of keeping that person safe if it doesn't work out. If we can tell ourselves that we are the exception to the rule and we're this special unicorn that things never work out for, why can't we tell ourselves that the inverse is true? What if you're someone that everything works out for? 
that is in the realm of possibility. If you can believe that you'll never be where you want to be, isn't it also true that you can believe that you can become someone better than you've ever imagined? That's, I mean, that's another mic drop here for Mia. <laughs> She's just spitting fire over here. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I love this topic and it's something that I've seen in my life time and time again of not only seeing more for yourself. And I've actually had a lot of really great conversations about this with people in my life recently of just seeing how truly capable and deserving they are of more in their life and being able to truly believe that, act as that is true. And then, you know, it becomes true over time, which is about the coolest thing that could ever happen. So I hope you enjoyed getting to know Mia a little bit more. I'm going to do a quick, quick rapid fire of some of Mia's favorite things. So Mia, what is your favorite energy drink? Ghost energy all the way. What is your favorite PD Banty? This one that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> what is your favorite Legion protein flavor? I'm going to get hate for this strawberry banana. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Um, green to wear and it's my power color and then I do really like light pink uh, rapid fire is it so rapid fire when you can't think of things off the top of your head what's your favorite song right now uh, blackout days but the subtronics remix what would be the festival that you would go to if you could go to any festival electric forest what is your go to place to eat when you go out to eat pretty much any and every poke place ever <laughs> What is something about you that most people don't know? I am banned from a shopping mall in San Diego because on a scavenger hunt, I went in the fountain to find a 2001 penny. Well, who would have thought you could get banned for going in that water? But I guess <laughs> it kind of makes sense after all. I was so, in eighth grade, so, I mean, does, does that really impact your life right now? No, not it doesn't. being able to go to that shopping mall. I don't think they'd remember me if I went back. Okay, good to know. You don't. I didn't know if they had maybe their your mug shot on the wall, and everyone's like, "Don't let this girl in. She's going to start stealing pennies." They told me not to come back. I haven't tried. So. <laughs> Well, that will wrap up everything today. And just a reminder, I know I gave one at the beginning as well, but we do not work with clients that have eating disorders that is outside of our realm. And while we did mention it today, it is not something that we provide help with. So if you are seeking help, then we'll lead some resources down below for you to be able to get the help. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining along. If you think someone else would really benefit from hearing how to change their language and how to change their life, then share this podcast with them. But I'll catch you guys later.